Hi and welcome to Majestic.Cloud. I am Laszlo and I am going to talk today about a brand new feature of AWS Lambda just released at Reinvent 2019, the biggest AWS event of the year. This new feature is provisioned concurrency and it's meant to resolve call starts as one of the main pain points of using Lambda. So, let's see what are call starts and uh, why they are important. Whenever you invoke a Lambda function, this invocation is routed to the execution environment. But if your Lambda function has not been used for some time, or when you need to process more concurrent invocations, or when you update your Lambda func function, a new execution environment are, is created. So, uh, the creation uh, of these uh, execution environments takes a bit of time and introduces a slow response time. And uh, this uh, slow response time is uh, usually referred to as a call start. For some applications, this is not a problem. So, for example, if you do data processing or you use Node.js or Python, these are not so sensitive to these uh, call starts. For other applications like uh, user-facing APIs or applications written in Java or .NET, this call start issue is more painful and was a major obstacle in adopting Lam Lambda for uh, some people. So provisioned concurrency aims to solve this problem for developers by keeping uh, the requested number of execution environments initialized so they are ready to accept invocations and respond immediately. They say the response times will be double digit milliseconds. This way you shouldn't have call starts as long as your number of invocations is below the provisioned concurrency. If your usage increases above the provisioned concurrency, you will start to experience call starts for those requests that are above your provisioned concurrency. But let's see how can we provision concurrency. I will show you first in the console where you can set the concurrency. But what will be more interesting to see, I think, is to deploy two Lambda functions, one with provisioned concurrency and the other one without it, and stress test them with the AB load testing tool. We will do the setup and deployment of these functions with the AWS SAM uh, CLI. So let's get started. First we will see how you can provision concurrency from the console. So let's create a function, I will call it concurrency function. I will use Node.js 12 and uh, use an existing role which I've created some time ago. Let's create the function. Um, then we can set the provisioned concurrency down here in this new section. Uh, however, this will not work initially because we need to create a new alias or a new version. You cannot provision uh, against latest. So let's cancel and create, a, publish a new version. This will be second version. And also uh, create an alias. I will call it live. And uh, I will... Uh, uh, set the version here okay it's now pointing to version 1 and now I'm inside this uh, alias live and now I can uh, set the provisioned concurrency and I can set here provisioned concurrency for example 10 and uh, this will be my provisioned concurrency and this uh, takes a bit of time uh, to complete so we'll wait a bit I will pause the video Okay, so the provisioned concurrency is now ready. Uh, it has the 10, uh, 10 uh, requested uh, allocation. And now uh, we'll uh, go and delete this function and uh, provision this from uh, AWS, um, AWS SAM template and deploy it with the uh, SAM CLI. So let's delete this function, otherwise I will start incurring costs Okay, this was deleted. Um, let's go to 
my SAM project I've created uh, beforehand and uh, here I have a SAM template um, in this SAM template I have set up two, uh, two functions one is a provisioned concurrency function and the second one is a normal function without a provisioned uh, concurrency so uh, the whole uh, magic is here in these three lines um, for the provisioned concurrency function so we will set up an auto publish alias um, and we also uh, use these new um, settings provisioned concurrency config and concurrent executions I will set 50 from here um, then we also have attached uh, API endpoints one uh, pro is provisioned and one is normal and uh, we have the outputs for uh, those here um, once this deploys I will grab these uh, URLs that uh, are um, shown for each of the endpoints one for the provisioned concurrency and one for the normal and um, stress test them with uh, the AB load testing tool so um, this code will be uh, also in a um, git repo I will share below the video so you can check the whole code there so I have uh, these two lambda functions here let's look at their code as well so they have exactly the same code so they should do the same thing um, they uh, simulate processing some data uh, with this uh, process some data method uh, and this has a set timeout this uh, waits for a bit of time uh, simulating uh, data processing and this is invoked here with await uh, process some data uh, in the lambda handler I also import some dependencies like lighthouse express and mysql these are not used but um, I want to import them and I also specified them here as dependencies in the package JSON file um, I want to import them uh, in order to increase my deployment size and uh, this is uh, important when my execution environment in Lambda is being initialized so it will take a bit of time um, while uh, Lambda initializes the execution uh, container uh, <clears throat> okay so uh, that's basically it here let's deploy these uh, Lambda functions with AWS MCLI and uh, run some load tests on them <clears throat> okay so let's uh, deploy I have the new AWS uh, SAM CLI so I will do a SAM deploy guided and this looks a little bit uh, different than what um, the previous version did of uh, the SAM deploy command and here I will just confirm the settings I've added previously so the stack name is lambda provisioned uh, it will be get deployed to EU central one that's the Frankfurt region then I will need to confirm here some options and um, then the um, deployment is uh, initialized <coughs> and um, we will need to wait a bit until uh, the whole um, um, stack is deployed I will wait a bit and uh, resume the video when this finished uh, deploying so my uh, stack finished uh, deploying let's look here at, at these uh, output values so I have um, here the URL for the provisioned concurrency lambda function this API gateway endpoint will invoke my function uh, which has provisioned concurrency set and the other one with normal uh, this will invoke the function that has no um, concurrency provisioned concurrency set I will do the tests uh, from an EC2 instance the same EC2 instance but I opened two terminal windows to that instance I do this because I don't want uh, my local network to be a factor in these tests so uh, the testing will be done with Apache Bench or AB uh, this is part of the Apache HTTP server uh, package 
and uh, this is used in the following way I will specify a B the number of requests which will be 200 in this case uh, and the concurrency will be 50 so uh, this means we will perform 200 requests uh, f uh, with a concurrency of 50 uh, at a time and um, we will need to uh, paste the the endpoint first I will uh, test the endpoint uh, for uh, normal uh, the normal function which has no provisioned concurrency set and let's uh, start the test um, this should not take uh, too much time because we only set uh, 200 here uh, 200 requests but you could uh, specify a higher number here and do the test so you can see uh, the test finished and I have uh, a nice little output from the AB tool which shows me that 50% of the requests were completed in uh, about two seconds and 100% of the requests were uh, finished in uh, three seconds and something so the longest request took three seconds and something and uh, this is a very uh, nice output from uh, the AB tool now uh, let's go in the other window uh, and um, also run the test with the same um, parameters so 200 requests with a concurrency of 50 but this time the URL will be uh, the one for the provisioned concurrency so this way uh, we can compare the results uh, having two, two windows here so this should not take uh, too much time so you can see that uh, with provisioned concurrency my numbers are uh, lower so 50% of the requests completed in two seconds and something and here 100% uh, of the uh, request uh, finished in uh, 2.4 seconds uh, and um, it's important to know that this is a small lambda function and uh, uh, doesn't do too much and that's why the results are not so different but uh, the difference can still be uh, seen uh, in this case so for the normal function uh, each time a new execution environment uh, was um, uh, provisioned for at least uh, a quarter of the invocations because I had 200 invocations and uh, the first uh, 50 uh, should take a little bit uh, longer because the execution environment needs to be uh, initialized and the other ones, the other 150 they are already running in uh, pro uh, execution environments that were warmed up so to say and here um, all my uh, requests 100% of them uh, run in execution environments that were provisioned beforehand by uh, by lambda so the difference uh, shows this that provisioned concurrency is a bit faster uh, there are no call starts and um, yeah you can see uh, that uh, this is a, a good way to avoid um, the call start problem however in my opinion um, this feature breaks the lambda pay as you go model and suddenly you need to pay a usage fee just like in EC2 basically if you have a spike usage pattern and you migrate it to the serverless model to avoid paying for idle time then you are back in your initial position of paying idle time so, sure there are uh, nuances and uh, certain use cases that would warrant this uh, this uh, scenario but uh, not for everyone and um, certainly paying for idle time is um, not an option in many cases so this was uh, the video on the lambda pro provision concurrency I hope you liked it if you did please uh, click on the thumbs up uh, button subscribe to the channel follow us on Twitter and I hope to see you in a next video. Have a great day.